Hi, I'm Meg Hale. And I'm Lindsay Kale. I'm one half of the lesbian travel blog, Dopes on the Road. We run the world's largest lesbian travel media site, specializing in anti-LGBT destinations and content for different vacation opportunities and holidays. Meg moved to South Korea to teach English. And while we were there, we were had the opportunity to travel more than either of us had ever traveled before. And so, of course, we started Googling around and looking to see what kind of information there was for lesbians. What's it going to be like in this destination? What am I going to have trouble with? Where am I going to be able to find community? And we quickly realized that there is almost nothing that exists. And we quickly realized that people were, were reading it. And from there, it just kind of grew, and, and we had like a need to share that information. Our reason for being is we want to provide information to the community and we want to build opportunities for our community and we want to preserve our culture. We certainly want to inspire. A lot of it is fear. People are not traveling because they're afraid of what to expect and sometimes it's something just as small as seeing us out there doing it and seeing us going to the places I think can have such a huge impact. We center all of our content from the position that all people on this earth deserve to see the beauties and the wonders of the world regardless of their sexual orientation or gender identity. It's really important to me that everything we do centers back to our community and centers back to our reason for being, which is providing opportunities, providing connections, providing relationships, all of that for our community. For me, I'm super motivated by cultural preservation and I'm super motivated by building opportunities for queer women in particular. So for me, finding my truth is about making sure that no matter what I'm doing or what country I'm in or where I'm traveling, that my content, that what I'm delivering, is always centered around the queer and lesbian community. The words find your truth to me mean using words to express like how I already felt. I have like a really dialed in identity and I feel like I know who I am, but I've spent a lot of time being quiet about it. And I think over recent years I've found my voice and the more that I've found my voice and I'm able to share like who I am authentically and realize that that does have an impact on the people around me, that, that to me is what it means. One of the cool things about working with Macy's personal stylist was that they were providing clothes that I probably wouldn't have picked out for myself. You know, I kind of stick with like the same sort of uniform and different like colors and fabrics. So I think like all women pretty much, you know, I have body insecurities and certain parts of my body I'd rather highlight and certain parts I won't. I'm a woman with curves and so it was nice to be able to have conversations about like, this is what I'd like to highlight and being able to do that in a way that wasn't awkward or judgmental. So I was pleasantly surprised by like the interaction and like the comfort with okay you, you can work with everyday women and it's not just models who deserve to have a styling session like we all deserve to have like a little bit of moment in the shine. My favorite part of the stylist experience has been having someone that listens to my clothing needs and saying I don't want my shirt to show off my chest and I want my pants to fit tight but I don't want them to look too girly. Having someone that listens to those needs and then is able to translate that into the clothes that I'm most interested in is just an incredible experience. And the fact that it is a free service that the public can experience without having to, you know, put an arm and a leg towards the stylist, and that's even before you buy the clothes, is amazing. I feel like I'm my true self when I'm allowing myself to be both feminine and smart and powerful. So I think authenticity for me is honoring my femme, is honoring my queerness, and is presenting in a way that I am comfortable with um, at all times. The best version of me definitely comes in part with a fresh fade, but also something that is a style that's practical, but I like to be a little bit stylish. I like to have a piece, a pair of shoes or a hat or something that is a little bit more trendy, but I also feel my most self when I am exploring a new place and having a new experience through the lens of my queer identity. I think one of the biggest things for me is Macy's being such an inclusive brand is I'm from small town Pennsylvania and when I first was I'm gonna cut my hair I'm gonna change my clothes and kind of finding my style it was almost impossible to find a place to go buy clothes every fitting room was a struggle every guy who you talked to in the men's department was like you know are you buying this for your dad no I want to wear this and so knowing that Macy's is in so many small cities across the country and knowing that so many people are going to be able to go in 
and buy the clothes that they want from a brand that they can trust is gonna do it the right way, I think is amazing. Macy's representing a wide variety of different people shows that, you know, you're not gonna walk in and work with your stylist and they're gonna think that you're a six foot tall model. You know, they're gonna be like, okay, you're 5'2 and working with a little curve and that's great too. We're gonna make you look fabulous and we're gonna make you feel like you're a million bucks, regardless of what you look like or how you identify.